Okay, we shall start. Good morning. Can you see the slide? Can you hear me? Okay, so today we will enter to chapter number seven. Okay, introduction to hydraulic system. So any other lah satu benda yang baru lah for you uh, studies. So previously we have seen uh, pneumatic, we have seen electro pneumatic. Okay, so all this requires a uh, pneumatic fluid sim. Okay, so fluid sim ada dua. Uh, ada dua jenis. Satu adalah fluid sim pneumatic. Satu satu lagi adalah fluid sim hydraulic. Perkataan P dengan H ke belakang tu. Okay, so uh, untuk design hydraulic system, you cannot use pneumatic. Okay, so you need to use uh, fluid sim H. Okay, so pastikan you gunakan software yang betul lah. Okay, so okay, so the definition of hydraulics. Okay, so hydraulic is the science of transmitting force and or motion through the medium of confined liquid. Okay, so comparison to pneumatic, uh, which using a comp compressed air, hydraulic use a confined liquid. Confined maksudnya tertutup. So uh, liquid in a closed area. Okay, so in a hydraulic device, power is transmitted by pushing on a confined liquid. So, dalam tu ada uh, confined liquid, uh, lalunya hydraulic oil lah, ataupun hydraulic fluid. Okay, so when I push, uh, so the power is transmitted by keep on pushing the liquid. Yes, lalunya macam tu. So, hydraulic power transmission is the technique of transmitting energy by means of liquid medium. Okay, uh, term hydraulic power transmission Transmission uh, maksudnya pemindaan tenaga. Okay, so our transmission of hydraulic is the technique of transmitting energy by means of liquid medium. Okay, so we are not using gas uh, or plus air, we are using a uh, liquid. Okay, liquid utilized for this purpose are the hydraulic fluid. So, apa -apa liquid yang digunakan dalam hydraulic system? So, kita panggil sebagai hydraulic fluid. Okay, so fluid kita tahu uh, terdiri daripada dua. One is air, another is liquid. Air for pneumatic, so uh, liquid for hydraulic. So that one you need to be clear. The hydraulic system are commonly used by mechanism requires large forces and precise control. Okay, so dua key point of hydraulic. Selalunya uh, kalau kita cakap hydraulic, we will refer to these two. Okay, so hydraulic offers a large force. Okay, kalau dia perlukan tenaga yang besar. So initially we saw pneumatic, it can produce uh, pressure up to, or force up to uh, 7 to 10 bars. Uh, so maksudnya dia tak, tak boleh buat kerja-kerja yang besar lah. Okay, so when you are using a large, you require a large force, you can you can consider hydraulic. Kalau sesuai. Okay, another thing is precise control. So meaning, uh, kalau dia perlu sampai dekat uh, 0 cm, hydraulic akan sampai dekat 0 cm. So it won't have like uh, slippage. Yang kita panggil slippage, maksudnya dia macam tersasar. So you won't have that. Okay, so because hydraulic system normally it will move slow and it can be controlled. You have a precise control. Okay, so that's that are the two advantage of hydraulic system. And basically kita akan tengok lah. Okay, so example of hydraulic system include vehicle power steering. Uh, benda yang selalu ni kita gunakan but we always uh, don't know that that is hydraulic system. Uh, kalau you memandu, okay, so you are using a power steering. So compared to those time steering, uh, you perlu gunakan tenaga yang besar. 
uh, yani you just need to use a little bit of power then you can turn your vehicle okay. so the classic example adalah dalam dalam kereta lah uh, so brake pedal ataupun apa-apa yang perlukan minyak minyak uh, yang selalu you kena service kan uh, so your engine oil uh, your engine is actually not really using uh, but the mechanism inside requires oil but uh, like brake uh, so brake that's why you need to make sure that you do service uh, always uh, selalu tukar bukan selalu lah dia ada dipnya reading so when reach that reading you need to change your brake fluid because it will become less efficient all this uh, consider as uh, hydraulic fluid okay so you can see this in a vehicle power steering and brakes okay so two things that in the car hydraulic jet uh, so you can not uh, uh, the workshop workshop kita dia ada hydraulic jet uh, so dia akan uh, tekan okay dalam tu ada uh, hydraulic fluid so when you keep on pressing so you can elevate uh, anything uh, especially the car lah. okay and uh, you have the uh, every earth moving machine okay, so earth moving machine uh, to do construction construction or any road works uh, so we always see uh, the excavator yes excavator uh, yang kore lubang tu Yes, yeah. so, uh, orang kampung dipanggil cari makan. So it will uh, help you to do road works. So all that, uh, you see, it, it won't move like fast. But it move at a slower pace, but it can be very precise and you can produce a large pot. Yeah, so that's about hydraulics. Okay, we will see common example of hydraulic system. Uh, so this is how a vehicle brake hydraulic system works. Uh, so you took a brake, you have a brake pedal. Okay, so inside you have uh, uh, all your uh, brake line. You have a uh, front brake caliper and a rear wheel uh, the piston okay so when you press the uh, the oil is in a confined place a person yang tertutup okay so you know uh, kita pernah belajar dalam thermal fluid when you apply a force uh, the equal force will be applied to the, the surface uh, the other surface can uh, so equal force is applied. Kalau you tekan, keep on tekan, so minyak you akan bergerak and uh, it will move the uh, brake calipers to apply brake. Uh, that is how uh, vehicle brake hydraulic system works. You boleh baca lah definition dekat sini. So when it touch the a tire so friction between the brake pad and the rotor cause the wheel to stop down slow down and then stop okay so that's something that you need to okay the second example is the vehicle power steering so they are connected to the hydraulic pump okay and power cylinder uh, so when you move the oil will help you uh, to apply small force atau small turn the steering wheel and your uh, tire or the wheel will start to move okay the hydraulic pump supply the oil through the control valve so there the valve uh, to the power cylinder shown in the figure the major advantage of using this system is to turn the vehicle wheels with less effort. Uh, so, you don't need to be like this. Sometimes, we look at the lorry. 
so they will be so i think now dori also already f power steering but sometimes you will see they will, will keep on turning the steering or to make a full turn so it requires a large effort so when you have a vehicle power steering so you can turn the vehicle wheels with less effort so that's how it will be useful Okay, so the third uh, example is the hydraulic jet. I think you have uh, seen this. If you go to car repair shop, we always see the hydraulic jet. Okay, so uh, the application in a small piston or uh, pumping piston transmit pressure through the oil to a large piston. Uh, piston power piston through a check valve resulting in the weight being lifted as shown in the video yani dia untuk lock the lock minyak ni uh, digunakan uh, check valve valve uh, so it will only allow oil to flow in a one direction so maksudnya kalau you tekan yang ni when you press so it will create a space for the oil to enter so the pressure to they can suck the oil uh, to the system uh, kalau dah masuk dekat kawasan ni it cannot go back because it will be closed only allow in one direction and you have another one you tekan lagi so it will uh, create a push and the oil will enter uh, kalau dah masuk kawasan ni oil cannot flow so when you keep on applying force so this process will repeat and your weight will start to move up okay to gunakan tangan boleh lift the old car so because it use a okay the fourth one the aircraft hydraulic system so normally in a, a larger machines uh, so you can see hydraulic system yeah, especially vehicles so it can be any vehicle you yeah, normally we will see in the car the car and uh, aircraft so uh, more all modern aircraft contain hydraulic system to open mechanism uh, flap flap the car wing so kapal terbang naik atau turun so the flap plays a large role so a pilot tekan je button the flap open uh, because because of uh, the hydraulic system and landing gear kalau kapal nak turun ataupun naik you can see the wheel will move slowly so bayangkan menggunakan pneumatic system so wheel akan naik dengan cepat and it cannot apply a lot of force uh, so landing gear using a hydraulic system the hydraulic pump that is coupled to the engine provides hydraulic power as illustrated in so your the landing gear is connected to the hydraulic so you can switch the hydraulic pump will supply uh, hydraulic power for you for the landing gear to uh, come down or go up okay, so similar to the uh, other sides of uh, especially on the flap and also uh, with the engine okay, so whichever requires oil hydraulic oil so it can be operated the hydraulic pump that is coupled to the engine provide hydraulic power as illustrated power is also distributed to system through the aircraft by transmission line so the memang ada banyak transmission line lah okay so like pipe pipe that transmit the hydraulic fluid so hydraulic power is converted to mechanical power by means of an actuating cylinder or hydraulic pump so it will be converted.
Okay, so hydraulic uh, pneumatic is uh, uh, pneumatic power to mechanical power. So hydraulic adalah hydraulic power to mechanical power. So the process is lebih kurang sama, cuma the mechanism will be slightly different because of the fluid medium. Okay, so lead machine. So if you are involved in mechanical. Uh, so all uh, manufacturing uh, industry, you are, you are working in a manufacturing industry. So machine tool construction is a typical area of application of hydraulic. We must have every machine. You know, board bending, you know, board. Uh, you want to prepare a workpiece. So slowly we can use two machines, lead machine and also milling machine. I don't know whether you all, you all ada belajar tak? Uh, lead and also milling dalam engineering skills. Ada tak belajar? Ada, sir. Ya kan? Uh, you need to work uh, with your workpiece to design something that you desire. Okay, so lead machine pun gunakan the same thing use a hydraulic that's why you apply a smaller force you can do a lot of job okay so modern machine so we are using a cnc machine so computer uh, aided uh, lead machine lah. so you do you apply a, a, a design in the software so your uh, machine will uh, kita panggil a cnc machine uh, so it will start to do the work. The tool and the work piece are climbed by hydraulic means. So, kalau uh, pneumatic, dia maybe dia tak boleh pegang uh, with the larger pressure, uh, tak boleh larger force. Uh, but when you are using uh, hydraulic, so it will provide uh, high force with precision. Uh, you tak rosakkan alat kerja and also it will uh, provide a large force to all the okay, so feet motion and the spindle drive can also be hydraulically powered. Anything that you want to feed or you want to spindle, spindle machine will put up. So you also can use uh, hydraulic power. A fundamental loss of hydraulics, so it involves a lot of loss. So upper power mechanical things, they normally will be associated with loss. All hydraulic systems operate following a defined relationship between area, force and pressure. Yes, I think dalam termo fluid kita ada belajar pasal ni. So it's related to area, force and pressure. The laws have been established to explain the behavior of hydraulic system. Hydraulic system use the ability of a fluid to distribute and apply force to a desired location. Uh, so hydraulic system will apply a uh, hydraulic force. Uh, then the fluid will distribute the force to a particular area. It is all connected. Okay, so we can take the loss behind the hydraulic system. Okay, when a force F is applied on an area, of an enclosed liquid, a pressure is produced as shown. Uh, so you apply a force in an area. The uh, area is very close. It is not open. If uh, you tekan something, if you don't have confined space, you tekan something, the uh, force that you apply to will make. So let's say you are pressing a water or a minyak. So you can see, you let a drop droplet of uh, oil on the table, then you tekan. So, dia akan bergerak ke CC. Okay, it will move to the side. Uh, because you don't have a confined space. So, if you do the same thing uh, to an oil in a confined space, it will move downward. Uh, it will move downward or it will start to fill the empty space. Okay, so that is the law that we are using in the hydraulic. Sama lah. 
So force area. So the formula we know pressure equals to force divided by area or force equals to PA. F equals to PA. If you want to calculate the pressure, so pressure equals to force over P. So that's the law, uh, law that we are using. So that's the formula that we are using. So pressure is the distribution of the given force over a certain area. Uh, so we have a force over a certain area. Pressure can be quoted in bar, uh, pounds per square inch, or Pascal. Where you can always see this uh, reading bar, PSI, and PA. Mana kita selalu tengok you know, benda ni? Any guess? Saya kereta. Ah, so kalau you nak pergi uh, pam angin kan? Ah, selalunya kita akan tengok benda ni lah. Ah, so uh, sometimes uh, different different company dia ada different different uh, reading. Uh, ataupun different different bagi okay. uh, dia punya re reading dia lah so ada yang dalam bar ada yang dalam PSI and uh, mostly in PA ataupun KPA ataupun kilo pascal okay. so um, it depends on the company lah uh, uh, so pounds per square inch is a British unit uh, British reading uh, bar dengan Pascal, so normally we will use lah. So you need to check. Uh, some sometimes the machine will have both. Uh, one side they they tunjuk reading Pascal, one more side they tunjuk reading PSI. Uh, so can be. Uh, so you need to check. Kalau you nak pam angin tu, you kena check berapa reading yang you selalu kena letak. Okay, then only it will be suitable. Okay, so pressure, so P equals to F over A. Okay, so where force is in Newton. Uh, force kita apply dalam Newton. Okay, so kalau dalam soalan dia bagi dalam kilogram. Uh, so you kena kali dengan 9.81 lah. Okay, convert to Newton. Okay, so area is in square meter. Ataupun meter square. So you, if required, you need to do conversion. The okay, one pascal equals to one newton per meter. One newton per meter. One pascal, yeah, okay, one pressure unit equals to one newton per meter. Newton for force per meter square. So you do. The one bar, ah, uh, ini adalah conversion ah uh, dia lah. Ah, uh, macam mana yang nari le? Okay, so 1 bar equals to 100,000 Pascal. Ataupun 10 to power of 5 Pascal. So 10 bar 1 million Pascal. Ataupun kita panggil as mega Pascal. Okay, so uh, yang ni quite famous juga lah soalan ni. Uh, to define Pascal law. So use Pascal law to calculate. So uh, bagian ni ada sedikit calculation. Okay, so uh, uh, macam ni lah. So when you apply a force, so the pressure, equal pressure is applied to all the side. To all the side. Then you juga lah, you ada piston. So you tekan. So all the sides yang ada surface, uh, semua akan uh, dapat equal pressure. So Pascal law states that the pressure in a confined fluid is transmitted equally to the whole surface of its container. Ini adalah definition Pascal's law. Apabila kita apply a force, uh, so the pressure is applied uh, equally, equally to the whole surface of its container. Kalau dia ada container tu ada atas, bawah, tepi, uh, semua Semua sisi yang uh, ada, semua akan uh, face the equal pressure. 
to when force F is exerted on the area or A, force F on the area A, the area of the so bullet lah area dia of an enclosed liquid enclosed liquid maksudnya liquid dalam kawasan yang tertutup pressure P is produced uh, pressure is produced if pressure applies at every point of the closed system as shown in figure yang ni lah so, all the points so, kalau ada seribu point seribu point pun akan kena pressure yang sama yeah, that is what Pascal's law Okay. okay, so uh, okay, okay, we see how it will be useful in our daily life. Okay, so figure below shows that if a downward force is applied to piston A, so at the dual piston uh, A1 lah, uh, okay, piston A1 dengan piston A2. Uh, ini adalah bigger surface lah bigger surface and both are connected to the same uh, liquid no, it's not it's not like half off so it's connected to the same liquid so you apply a small force to get in it under newton so you apply here under newton is enough to lift a car that's the magic of it lah uh, so smaller force can be used to lift a uh, heavier things. So that is what uh, Pascal's law useful in our daily life. Okay, according to Pascal's law, the pressure at piston A, I ataupun A one, ataupun pressure at P one, pressure at the equals to pressure at piston B. Upon piston A2. Okay, so which will produce uh, a force in the opposite direction to uh, lift from something. Okay, so the key formula. Animation, animation. Here. So if you see, okay, Pascal's law, so fluid pressure is applied in terms of the force exerted per unit area. Okay, so we know pressure 1 equals to pressure 2. So tadi kita tengok gambar tu. So pressure 1 adalah dekat piston 1 and pressure 2 at the piston 2. Dekat piston 1 and piston 2 adalah sama according to Pascal's law. As long as it's connected. Is connected to the same liquid. Okay, so based on that, kita tahu pressure equals to force over area. So P equals to F over A. So based on this, so P1 equals to F1 over A1 and P2 equals to F2 over A2. When you apply these two things to this formula, then you dapat yang ni. F1 over A1 equals to F2 over A2. Ini adalah formula yang you akan gunakan dalam Pascal's law. Simple je formula dia. It's not so complicated. Walaupun calculation. So this is what we can use in Pascal's law. So Pascal's law cakap yang ni. Okay, because of that, kita dapat formula ni which can be used to do calculation. Selalunya soalan akan bagi tiga benda. Uh, tiga reading, disuruh cari satu. So, it can be anything lah. Uh, sebab ada four element. It can be either one. Uh, so, depends on the question. Okay, so, kadang-kadang boleh suruh cari force one. Kadang-kadang force two. Kadang-kadang A1. Ataupun A2. So, accordingly, you just need to arrange this formula. We will see one example. So, so this is the example of Christian. In the figure, find the weight of the car in Newton. If the area of piston A is 
zero point zero zero six meter square, and the area of piston B is zero point zero one zero five meter square. So, bula bula, you can think of because the formula requires uh, force to be newton and area to be in meter square. Uh, so, what I need you to apply what conversion? If the question give in a centimeter square, uh, then you need to convert to meter first. Better to convert to the law. Then the force is applied on the piston is 500 newton. So newton bone, uh, sorry, the force also in newton. So you don't need to make any conversion. Okay, so you apply the formula. So Pascal's law, P1 equals to P2. Okay, so then you double the formula ni F1 over E1 is F2 over E2. This solution is equal. Find the weight. The uh, weight of the car must be force 2. Uh, it involves with force 2. So if force 2, you rearrange. Yani naik ka atas. So you will have the formula ni F2 equals to F1 times A2 over A1. Formula ni, then you just replace. Okay, so force one is five hundred. Then times with a two, a two is zero point zero one zero five divided by zero point zero 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 six. So you divide force dalam uh, newton. Okay, so you just settle this. Divide eight seven five zero. You should carry weight. Dia bukan suruh cari mass of the car. You make a low mass. You kena bagi yang ni dengan gravity lah. Uh, so 9.81. So then you dapat uh, the mass. Selalunya kita confused lah. Okay, when uh, we say weight. Sebab kita timbang berat badan kan. Uh, kita cakap weight. Tapi dia show dalam kilogram. So that's not. So if weight. So the unit is Newton because it's a force. Okay, so if we ask to calculate mass in kilogram, then you need to divide by gravity, 9.8. Okay, so this is how you can use Pascal's law to do calculation. I think it's uh, quite simple, uh, I think. Uh, you're supposed to be bored, lah. If you're bored, to I put it on board uh, one But I think what this is simple enough for you to understand. Okay. So so far, that's all. Eh? Any question? Will you follow? Will you say again? Oh, sir. So we uh, see a few more slides before we take uh, five. Okay, so type of hydraulic system. Okay, so hydraulic system, it can be any system. Lah. So the place L by hydraulic in modern automation technology illustrate a wide range of application for which it can be used. Okay, so hydraulic, compared to pneumatic, hydraulic is used more okay, in our daily life. Because in daily life, kita nak mudahkan kerja, so we just want to apply a smaller force to do larger force. Uh, to do an application requires larger force. Excavator is uh, something that we use daily, and then the excavator or the earth moving machine is something that we use daily. And the industrial technologies, what about machining? So the machineries. So we use a uh, very uh, this is the hydraulic system. Hydraulic system in India design. Okay, so hydraulic system. There are two types of hydraulic system. Uh, so one is stationary hydraulic, and one more is mobile hydraulic. Is stationary maksudnya it is fixed in one system. Uh, macam uh, workshop, you can go play platform to naik and create So it's fixed in one system. It's not mobile. You cannot like move around. So mobile hydraulic, much I excavated the day. 
ada wheel dia boleh bergerak dari satu tempat ke satu lagi tempat untuk buat kerja okay, that, that is uh, macam car is a mobile hydraulic uh, so it's not stationary the stationary normally will be the machine train uh, train using a uh, so train actually ada dua jenis uh, macam dekat pelabuhan so dia gunakan the stationary one So macam crane yang bergerak dari uh, yang ada tayar tu, so that is a mobile hydraulic. So depends on the application. Yeah, okay, normally if stationary, it will be used to do uh, larger, uh, how to say, larger force lah. Mobile ni dia a bit limited, because uh, the oil hydraulic oil inside is limited. So stationary right uh, stationary hydraulic um what's any reservoir pangan so pintu the kampangan ni uh, so is hydraulically control control so it's a stationary hydraulic so you are you are not moving it uh, you are not moving it from one place to another place uh, ya ni dia macam satu piston lah so dia extend and retract so uh, dia dia rod Okay, so stationary hydraulics is fixed at one station where all the activities are carried out at the same station. Uh, so kalau you nak buat apa-apa, you kena buat dekat tempat dia. So you need to bring the workpiece to that place, uh, macam late machine tadi. So maybe it's a fixed machine. So you need to bring the workpiece to that uh, station. So stationary hydraulic is used in machine tool application. Anything related to machine lah. So normally we won't move. The following application area are important for stationary hydraulics. The production and assembly machine of all type. Okay, kalau you tengok dekat industry. So transfer line. So lifting and conveying device. The prices, injection, molding machine. Air rolling. All this you can see in industry lah in future. Memang all these things will be in the production line. Tapi idea dia is fix in one station and uh, if you want to do work, you need to go to that particular station. Uh, sebab tu, car workshop, uh, you kena bawa kereta you ke workshop. Bukan workshop come to you. Because all the thing that uh, is fixed, it will be in the workshop. And mobile hydraulic. So this is excavator. You just sit there and think of the other hydraulic pistons inside for you to like move. And bawa pun ni pun. So yang ni pun dia boleh pusing. So tire face another side. Yang ni dia boleh pusing dan buat kerja. Okay, so mobile hydraulic system move on wheel or track. So track maksudnya macam rantai lah. Okay, so wheels or roda. Okay, for example, unlike uh, stationary hydraulic system, which remain firmly between one position. Uh, hydraulic is in one position. Mobile hydraulic, you can move using wheel or track. Okay, so wheel uh, or track is depending on the nature of the work. Lah. Kenapa yang excavator ni digunakan rantai? Because the nature of the work. Dia kena turun dalam longkang, dia kena naik dalam atas bukit. Uh, so track, uh, so kalau roda tu, uh, dia tak boleh naik uh, in a certain certain place. So, is a wheels or track, is depends on the nature of the work. Okay, so a characteristic feature of mobile hydraulic is that the valve are frequently manually operated. Good. Yang ni valve dia uh, Sebab tu you tengok uh, You ada satu operator Ada orang dalam tu So dia akan move all the valve Dia akan on yang ni Dia akan tarik yang ni So uh, So it's a Normally will be manually operated So typical application Field for mobile hydraulic Includes construction machinery Okay, there are some construction machine, machine that 
remove ha, macam print yang apa lah yang yang, yang boleh move ha, related to construction so excavator elevating platform okay, lift lift gunakan hydraulic walaupun dia connected to uh, electrical but it also use a hydraulic system okay, dalam tu Okay, so lifting and conveying devices for any conveyor or a production line can use uh, it is using a larger force so you can use hydraulic okay so depend depend on the application and agricultural machineries uh the couple list kita tengok ada banyak sawah padi so uh, mission manuai and uh, all the other missions lah. Uh, semua gunakan uh, hydraulic. Semua buat hydraulic. Okay. So far boleh boleh faham ada soalan? Any question so far? No sir. Okay. So kalau tak ada soalan. Uh, we will take five. And uh, now is eight forty-four. We will start at eight fifty.
Okay, we will continue. Are you back? Okay, can we continue? Okay, sir. Okay. Structure of a hydraulic system. Okay, so this is actually the structure of hydraulic system. Okay. I think all the structures and the walls, the symbols, almost uh, like uh, pneumatic, uh, but just the construction and the valve type will be a bit different. Okay, so whatever system you need to supply power, okay, then you have uh, control, then you have uh, drive. So this is how the power flow. Okay, so for hydraulic, so we start with power supply section, power control section, and also drive section, similar like pneumatic. Okay, so this simplified block diagram shows the division of hydraulic system into a signal control section and hydraulic power section. So this signal control section is used to activate the valve in the power control section. So it involves uh, many valves. Uh, okay, so valve is activated, uh, so the oil will be directed. Uh, so here also you will have uh, like pistons uh, which will be uh, moving. It just the symbols will uh, be slightly different okay, compared to pneumatic. Maybe since you like five to six chapters, you're already familiar with pneumatic. So maybe it will take some time for you to adjust to hydraulic system and its uh, design and also the simulation. But if you follow closely, you surely can uh, differentiate between. So there are some some things that you need to change. So you will know. Okay, so hydraulic power section we will see one by one. Okay, so hydraulic the power supply section. Okay, so power su supply section. So similar like pneumatic, it start from bottom to up. Okay, so that's a like rule of thumb la, or the good practice. Okay, so all your supply will be down here. So your processing or the control will be at the middle and your drive or the power element will be on top. Okay, so power supply section contains the hydraulic pump. Okay, so you have a hydraulic pump. So this and uh, this symbol. Okay. The hydraulic pump and drive motor. Okay, so you have a motor. Okay, so all this uh, section. Uh, and here also you will have all the filters, uh, so everything a single light image. Okay, just for hydraulic, so you are using pump, you are not using compressor. Macam pneumatic kita gunakan compressor, because you can capture the air from the surrounding, you compress, baru uh, you uh, either left uh, power. Macam ni ni. Untuk hydraulic, you tak perlu compress. Sebab liquid you cannot compress. Almost incompressible. Uh, so you compress pun macam tak guna kan. Uh, so you just already uh, have the oil in the system. You just need to use the pump to transmit from one place to another place. They can push the liquid to one place to another place. So jangan check up what to explain. Uh, hydraulic gunakan compressor. Uh, so that is uh, okay, so you are using a hydraulic pump. So the energy control section, the middle one, consists of various valves used to provide control and regulate the flow rate, pressure and direction of the hydraulic fluid. Uh, so you think of this uh, is a summer. So it's uh, practically like copying the first half of the subject uh, especially in the design side lah uh, cuma dia ada sedikit perbezaan lah nanti kita akan discuss okay, the drive section consists of cylinder okay, yang atas ni ataupun power section consists of cylinder or hydraulic motors which depends on the application so whether it's linear or uh, rotary depending on the application in
Okay, so kita tengok sikit hydraulic power section or unit. The hydraulic power section ataupun the supply unit. Kita panggil supply unit. Provides the energy required for the hydraulic installation. Most important components are the reservoir. Ataupun tank. The drive or electrical motor. The motor digunakan untuk start the pump. Ada full line lah. So then you have hydraulic pump to push the fluid from one place to another place. Then you have a pressure relief valve ataupun a safety valve, a filter and also cooler. These are the components, important components of hydraulic power unit. Yang ni adalah satu power unit lah. Semua ada. Semua ada. Uh, yang ni memang uh, kita ada dalam lab me mechatronic system design okay, kita tak, tak sempat lah nak guna kan since online so we just need to run with simulators lah if you see okay so kalau you tengok dekat sini you have a reservoir you have a tank so you have a drive electrical motor yeah by electrical motor, you have electric, uh, electrical motor is supposed to be at the back lah. Okay, then you have a pump. Uh, then you have a valve lah, pressure relief valve. You have a filter. Filter maybe tak nampak kot. Okay, so, so normally filter will be there lah. Okay, and you have a cooler. Hydraulic power unit may also act as a carrier for other device, gauges, directional control. Maybe boleh juga ada macam ni lah. It can have other direction control valve juga attached to your power unit. Okay. So hydraulic power unit. This is the simplify and detail symbol of hydraulic power pack are shown as apa perbezaan dengan pneumatik? Tengok yang ni. What's the difference? Boleh cakap sikit. Ada orang dia cakap. What's the difference of this symbol with uh, pneumatik? Uh, it's blackened. Yeah, so it's uh, in dark in color. Okay, so the uh, so to differentiate, the first difference will be the symbol. Uh, kalau you lorekan uh, macam ni, at the input of your valve, so I know you are referring to hydraulic. Kalau dia warna putih, so we know it's a pneumatic. So jangan campur symbol. Kalau you campur symbol, uh, so I will assume that you don't know the fundamentals of Okay. So, I akan potong maka. Confirm potong maka. Okay. I akan bulat, I akan potong maka. So, because you don't know what you are learning. So, I need to penalize. Okay, so if uh, detail, uh, dia ada macam ni lah. Uh, so, apa apa simbol ni? Yang kat bawah ni macam macam. Yes. What is this? Any guess? A tank, sir? Yeah, so this is actually a tank. Uh, macam dekat, dekat dalam pneumatic, all the ex, uh, excess air dalam sistem, uh, dia akan release ke mana? Dalam pneumatic, kalau you understand lah. So where the excess air will be released? Dalam pneumatic, dalam pneumatic. Exhaust. Ah, so exhaust, exhaust tu akan pergi ke mana? Surrounding. Yeah, so it will be, sebab udara kan, so it's not harmful you to release. 
release to the environment back. So, mula-mula you dapat dari environment, you compress, you gunakan down to your system. Yang excess air dalam pneumatic, dia release balik ke udara. So, uh, it's not, uh, it's armless. Tapi, untuk hydraulic, can you do that? You gunakan hydraulic oil untuk power the system, you gunakan pump. The excess air, how you need to manage? So, excess oil in dalam system tu, boleh tak you release to the surrounding? I think no, sir. Yeah, no, because it will be, one thing, it's not environmental friendly, and it will cause other effect. Cuba bayangkan, hydraulic oil tumpah dari your machine, ke luar. So, what will happen? Safety issues. Orang boleh jatuh, vehikel boleh terbalik, terbabas, kan? So, it's not safe. So, for hydraulic, you mula dari tank, return balik ke tank. Kalau you ada lebihan. Macam dalam kereta lah. Kalau dia tumpah ke kedua, you tengok bawa kereta tiba-tiba ada tempur minyak. So, you know there's a leakage. So, you know that it's not supposed to be. Uh, you bawa immediately to the workshop to settle, you tukar us baru, uh, you tukar pipe baru dalam tu. Uh, so similar lah. So if the hydraulic oil or the fluid must be within the system, it cannot be move, moving out. So that's the two things that are obvious lah. One is this symbol, symbol of the input and also the exhaust. Yang ni, you tak ada exhaust. Macam dalam uh, pneumatic, you ada segitiga yang terbalik kan? Uh, untuk exhaust. Dekat sini, you kena letak tank. Saya eh, eh, cuba tunjuk lah. Tak ada yang ni sesuai. Okay, maybe I can. I find one more. Ah, kalau you tengok dekat sini, you tengok kan? If you see, ah, this is your exhaust for hydraulic. You can connect to this symbol. Jangan letak square yang terbalik. Macam pneumatic. Macam ni. Dia ada macam something to collect back the excess oil. Kalau ada yang dark macam ni, Kalau ada dark macam ni, so I know it's a uh, hydraulic. And if I see this symbol, I know it's hydraulic. You are referring to hydraulic. Kalau you campur tu, I can minus. If you more slice to go. Okay. Reservoir. Apa maksud reservoir? Tanki. Ya, reservoir is macam satu umpangan. Nah, umpangan selain kita panggil reservoir. Okay. So, dalam hydraulic, kita refer to the tank. Okay, so, reservoir, uh, at the reservoir, within the reservoir, Air, water and solid matters are separated out of the hydraulic fluid. Uh, so, hydraulic fluid ni dia leci sikit. Sebab, uh, di, you tak boleh ada a lot of things inside. Uh, udara tak boleh ada, tak boleh ada any debris ataupun kotoran dalam tu. So, you need to really jaga. Uh, sebab tu, dalam reservoir, 
air water and solid metals are separated uh, from the hydraulic there are some filtration la kita ketiga the size of the reservoir will depend on the practical application involved the stationary system the volume of fluid delivered by the pump in 3 to 5 minutes can be taken as a get the size of the reservoir ataupun size of the tank depend kat application uh, kalau system you gunakan stationary system uh, macam excavator tadi uh, so you can add a su supply of hydraulic uh, power ataupun hydraulic fluid untuk run the system 3 ke 5 minit uh, cuba bayangkan you on the you bawa stationary uh, apa uh, the excavator tu you nak buat kerja dekat jalan you on je satu minit sistem you tak ada power dah uh, sebab all the hydraulic fluid is used sebab itu waktu you pergi servis kereta pun uh, the manufacturer dah bagi dah uh, cakap okay every time you service you need to pour 4 liters of and engine oil ataupun 1 liter of fluid, uh, brake oil so dia dah bagitahu dah so cuba bayangkan instead of 1 liter you cuma gunakan uh, 100 milliliter so what will happen to the system it will not function properly uh, especially for the stationary system lah. so at least you must have uh, the fluid to run 3 to 5 minutes continuously then selepas dia run 5, 3 to 5 minit uh, dia akan sebab dia akan pulang balik the oil to the tank kan so it will use back uh, bukannya stationary system ni you hanya boleh gunakan 3 ke 5 minit so it's not so once the system start so it will like rotate dalam tu uh, so it will start the system lah dia akan hantar the system dia akan dapat balik dari system so it will use back Okay, so that's for the stationary system. So in mobile hydraulic system, on the other end, sorry, this is for stationary system. Yeah, tadi. Uh, okay, well, for mobile hydraulic system, on the other end, the reservoir contains only the maximum quantity of hydraulic fluid required. So hydraulic, hydraulic, uh, yang tadi tu, uh, uh, for the stationary system, macam lake system macam tu. So you need to run at least three to five minutes. For mobile hydraulic system, uh, you can add the maximum quantity lah, sama. Actually, dua benda tu sama lah. So, you need to make sure the hydraulic uh, fluid is enough. Uh, enough. Uh, so, ini kalau maximum tu, uh, macam saya bagi tahu tadi, kita cakap 4 liter maximum. Uh, yang ini continuous. Uh, you can add oil dalam reservoir tank yang simpan dalam storage okay, so that's uh, two things lah okay, so the function uh, soalan yang biasa keluar okay, so functions of reservoir ya ada dalam part function so this for the hydraulic lah uh, so not for only metric okay, the first function of reservoir provide storage for the hydraulic fluid uh, macam kita tahu time tu wajib kena ada dalam hydraulic uh, so you must have macam dalam pneumatic uh, it's optional whether you want to have a storage tank or not so you boleh compress terus boleh power the system boleh juga uh, tapi dalam hydraulic so you must have a storage tank or we call it as a reservoir okay, sebab hydraulic fluid kena ada dalam macam kita tengok tadi so at least 3 to 5 minutes you must have uh, kalau tak mana dia nak cari oil uh, macam um, udara is uh, around uh, surrounding us uh, so you boleh tangkap sikit you boleh compress you boleh gunakan dalam sistem oil mana kita nak cari kita kena beli kita kena isi so you need to have a proper storage of hydraulic fluid and sufficient uh, supply of hydraulic fluid that's why reservoir is important Okay, dalam reservoir juga dia ada reading dia. Uh, okay, so the level is unclear. 
So selalunya dia akan ada minimum and maximum level. So kalau dia sampai ke minimum, either you need to tukar the minyak ataupun you kena top up. Macam dalam kereta lah. You kena either top up ataupun you kena tukar baru. So pastikan selalunya dia ada dekat maximum level. So that it will not have a shortage. Selalunya dia akan ada reading dia lah dekat storage tank tu. Okay. So that's the first function. The second function is to help dissipate heat produced in the oil. So many restrictions to flow and internal friction in components and piping produce heat in the oil. Still all of the reservoir can help dissipate undesirable heat. Okay. So what will happen kalau hydraulic oil kena heat? What will happen? Kalau minyak kena apa? Dia meletup. Dia meletup, kebakaran boleh berlaku. So, hydraulic system or hydraulic fluid is prone to fire. So, kebakaran boleh berlaku sebab itu, uh, I say, cannot have leakage. It, it can be hazardous. Okay, it can be hazardous to the environment and also the safety of the people. Or the operators. So you need to remove it. Uh, dissipate maksudnya you want to remove uh, something slowly. Okay, so it you need to remove from the hydraulic system. Macam pneumatic system tak kisah lah ada it ke tak. Uh, so it doesn't matter. But for hydraulic, so you need to make sure that the it is removed efficiently. Okay, uh, the heat is happening because of the internal friction. Dalam pipe. So, what you can pipe, kan? So, dalam tu, when the fluid is moving at a certain speed, uh, so it will cause the internal friction. So, kalau you gunakan dia lama, uh, so the friction will turn to heat that uh, produced in the oil. Uh, so, you need to remove this heat. Kalau you can remove, you can cause fire. Okay, so in the reservoir, uh, selalunya kat tepi uh, ataupun kat belakang tu, dia ada steel wall. Steel wall ataupun dinding dia lah, dia buat daripada steel. So high quality uh, besi lah. Okay, and uh, waktu oil kena dekat wall, all of the reservoir, so the heat transfer will happen. It transfer will happen. The heat will be transferred to the steel wall, and the steel wall, the steel wall, uh, so the heat will be released to the environment. Okay, so that's the second function. The third function allows air bubbles to rise to the surface of oil. Uh, so tadi I bagi tahu, so you cannot have water, you cannot have air, you cannot have uh, extra uh, debris inside the oil. Kalau tak, sistem you akan kena kacau. Okay. So, air bubbles. Okay. So, without reservoir, air bubbles track in the hydraulic component which may result to component failure. So, if there's a lot of air bubble, so, dia akan macam sekat-sekat lah your system. And sudden, uh, suddenly like no supply, dia akan cause component you to rosa. Uh, so your direction control valve can be uh, faulty. Uh, you can avoid replacement. So component failure always requires maintenance. Uh, so maintenance, they makan cost lah. Satu you can buy the car operator, satu lagi uh, time consuming. Another thing is replacement for look at do it. So it's not uh, desirable lah. Uh, so what uh, it will do, so that's a mechanism when it continuously moving inside the uh, reservoir. So the air bubble automatically will rise to the surface of the oil. So this is sampai the surface of the oil. And there the mechanism here lah to remove the air bubbles. Uh, so normally air bubbles, uh, you will try to push it further uh, so that uh, it will be uh, macam 
Okay, okay. Ha, macam macam ni. So dia selalunya ada satu surface dekat atas. Yang is not full lah. Tank ni tak full. So the air bubble will move to the surface and it will come to this side. Ha, and it will be removed from the system. Okay, so uh, that's the third uh, function. The fourth function allow dirt and contamination to settle at the bottom of the reservoir. So contamination level in the hydraulic system must be carefully monitored and controlled to avoid as catastrophic failures. So catastrophic failures maksudnya sudden uh, sudden jerk ataupun sudden impact lah. Sudden no supply, so anything sudden. So catastrophic meaning sudden failures. Sudden. Okay. So contamination level. So, your oil can have any debris ataupun dirt, so anything lah, any benda asing. So anything can be inside which can contaminate the oil. So, dalam reservoir, so benda selalunya, the dirt will, will have some mass. So, dia, uh, kalau density dia bit more, it will go down because of the gravity. So, dekat bawah tu, okay, so tak nampak lah. Bawah tu selalunya ada satu trap lah. The trap, the, the dirt, uh, dia akan uh, remove. So, that's the four functions of hydraulic reservoir. Okay, which you need to do. Okay, and then hydraulic filters. Okay, so hydraulic uh, filters, the so significance of hydraulic filters, so nama pun filter, so you need to filter something lah. So tadi pun kita tengok ada banyak benda yang kita nak filter. So air bubble lah, so ada dirt lah. Uh, so, so many things that you need to filter. So hydraulic system need clean and uncontaminated fluid to operate properly. Pastikan oil yang you isi tu, uh, that's why when uh, kalau you ada experience to come in your uh, service treater again. Uh, so you change new oil, you can feel uh, the sudden change in the, your car. Tiba-tiba oh, you you pick up tinggi, you can go faster. Because it's new oil, it's clean and uncontaminated oil. So minyak, macam mana pun, after some time, it will jadi kurang efficient. Uh, so then you can see the performance of your car will reduce. But uh, as long as uh, you keep on changing the oil, uh, follow the term, uh, selalunya dia ada uh, jumlah kilometer yang kita boleh travel or uh, uh, time ataupun your months, months yang you boleh travel. Selalunya macam, okay, let's say 7,000 kilometers or months or six months. So better to change. Uh, proper maintenance will make the system to work for you longer. So contaminants in Edmonton and in Edmontonly introduced into the hydraulic system or metal debris from normal component where can damage hydraulic so, so many things that, that can uh, damage your hydraulic component. It can be a metal debris, it can be any other contaminants. Lah. Contaminants and banyak. So, filters are used to discharge by nominal and accelerating in the background. Uh, filters adalah hydraulic. Selalunya kita uh, classify gunakan micron. The micron adalah size. Yeah, a filter nom nominally rated as 10 micron. So 10 micron maksudnya uh, will trap most particle 10 micron in size of, uh, in size of larger. So 10 micron. Micron is a quite small lah. Uh, filters lalunya kita choose. Kalau you nak pergi beli dekat kedai hardware, uh, you kena bagi tahu lah. So I give me the hydraulic filter I put that specific need of 10 micron. So 10 micron. Uh, so 10 micron 
dia boleh filter uh, the particles 10 micron or larger. Jadi, kalau ada yang lagi besar, uh, dia akan semua trap dekat filter tu lah. So the remaining one will be uh, the, the smaller one. The smaller one. Uh, kalau you nak filter yang itu juga, maybe you need to buy uh, 1 micron ataupun 0.1 micron. Selalunya lagi specific will be lagi costly. Price won't be the same. Okay, so you need to filter out. Uh, so filter untuk hydraulic, dia macam filter air dekat rumah. Uh, dia macam satu corong kan. So inside you have the filtering material. So the oil will pass through the filtering material and uh, all the uh, debris will be filtered out. Okay, the filter absolute rating, however, will be somewhat higher size, so perhaps 25 micron. Selalunya, uh, kita gunakan 25 micron lah dalam hydraulic system. Uh, because smaller than that, you boleh gunakan. Uh, it will be better. Uh, but uh, normally, we will use uh, 25 micron. Okay, the function of reservoir. Uh, uh, ini adalah macam filter tank lah. So, uh, the oil will enter. It will come to the sides and you have the filtering material. Okay, so only the one with the proper size, proper micron size uh, will enter inside and supply to the outlet or to the Bacalah dekat sini. Di many filters also use a bypass valve. Allows through to through to the filter. Mesti bila pasang tu dia ada. So filter you need to clean always. You need to clean always. Uh, untuk buang debris yang uh, collected. Okay, so there are mainly three filter arrangements. Okay, mana you now fit your filter. Okay, so return flow filter. Sebab yang ni dia macam satu circulation. Dia start dari tank, balik ke tank. So you can uh, return flow filter, dia letak uh, at the return flow. Waktu dia balik tu, dia letak filter. So that dia filter baru masuk ke tank. Okay, so you boleh baca lah advantage dia. So, uh, simple maintenance uh, sebab you just need to maintain after the system do the work. So, dia tak kacau the operation of the system lah. Okay, uh, disadvantage contaminant can only be checked having passed uh, through the hydraulic component. Maksudnya, uh, kalau ada contaminant, dia dah pass through all the hydraulic, nak balik baru you nak check. So that's the disadvantage lah. So before di Bali tu komponen you dah rosak dah. Walaupun dia economically simple and uh, lower cost, uh, it has some disadvantage. Tapi as the industry, these are the setup that frequently use because of easy maintenance. Okay, then you have a pump inlet filter. Ada retang ke pump, you filter dulu, baru you masuk ke pump. So protect palm from contamination. So palm you boleh uh, taruh salah. Uh, it can be used for a longer period. Why you the filter siap-siap baru you supply. Uh, so disadvantage, difficult access, inlet problem with fine force filter. Result, cavitation. Cavitation, I think, dalam thermo fluid, kita ada blazer. So filter tu dia selalu ni attach dengan your tank. So one thing, uh, susah nak, you kena buka the reservoir tank uh, Reservoir tank pun susah nak do maintenance lah uh, Sebab udara you pergi tumpah uh, So many things, so difficult to access uh, And uh, it can cause cavitation Cavitation dia macam uh, Some kind of uh, damage lah, damage to your filter Okay, so uh, can also be used aid of the pump as a cost filter. The good idea lah, system ni. Okay, the is not so uh, popular. Then 
you can have a pressure line filter. The pressure line at the last of the pump. So this is before pump. This is after pump. The little filter. So uh, minya yang pump the filter dulu baru masuk ke system. Small for for size possible for valve sensitive dirt. We will use smaller micron channel. Yeah? But like I said, when you it involve with the specific unusual micron size, uh, cost will be uh, more. But it will have disadvantage here. Like uh, I requires a pressure tight housing and contaminant. Uh, you can keep on checking. Uh, so you need to have an indicator to check. To bagi, on to bagi tau. Ada contaminant ke? Okay, so that's uh, on the filter. Okay, so uh, this is the last part for today. Hydraulic coolers. In hydraulic system, friction causes energy loss when the hydraulic fluid flows through the line that pump. Uh, so tadi, uh, friction. Friction dalam dalam system, hydraulic system, can cause uh, eat. Tadi kita tengok, dia akan cause eat uh, and also energy losses. So, so most of the uh, energy convert to eat energy. Eat adalah satu energy. So dia convert to eat energy, so it causes a energy loss. Okay, and uh, this causes the hydraulic fluid to eat up. So energy loss ke jadi eat. So operating temperature should not exceed 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. So dalam industry, um, make sure that your, system, uh, your hydraulic system is not 50 to, uh, is within within 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, not more. Where there is a hydraulic temperature, uh, I, sorry, high temperature, the viscosity of the oil caused by the Unacceptable amount leading to premature aging. Uh, so, uh, kalau uh, system you terlalu panas, they, they melibatkan uh, hydraulic oil and uh, the transmission line. So, the viscosity of the oil uh, uh, or dalam bahasa kita, so the quality of the oil will reduce. Okay, so, the quality of the oil will reduce. And it will cause uh, it for premature aging. Okay, premature aging, maksudnya, uh, it will, uh, you need to change before the time. Lah. So let's say it can be used for six months, uh, maybe three months, at the, at three months, the viscosity already much of a uh, So you need to change it early. You need to change early. So that's uh, something that uh, you need to. Okay, so that thing. Uh, so the following cooling device are available. Uh, selalunya kita gunakan dua mechanism. Yeah, okay, air cooler. Yeah, air cooler. So you can it can compensate up to twenty five degrees. So twenty five degrees from the environmental temperature. So, uh, so let's say your system is, uh, I think our room temperature is uh, dalam 27 degrees Celsius. So it can cover up to another plus 25. Uh, so it's uh, within this uh, level. Okay, so if your hydraulic system and dalam 50 lebih degrees, you can use air cooler. Uh, so, a water cooler, so you can have a difference uh, on 35. So, meaning it's near to 60 degrees Celsius. Lah. Uh, so, kalau lebih itu jangan lah. Uh, so, you need to maintain it not more than 50 to 60. Kalau you are more efficient, dalam 50. So, water cooler, Water cooler uh, with this design of cooler hydraulic fluid is fed through tubes over which coolant. Uh, so you gunakan coolant. 
so continental cars dia selalunya ada coolant dia sendiri dia gunakan water cooler system lah macam the normal cars dia gunakan air cooler dia boleh gunakan air cooler lah Okay, so uh, you are using coolant. So when your hydraulic, di macam ni lah, dia ada coolant uh, dalam ni. It can be either, I think the the blue color is the coolant lah. Sorry, uh, the the red color is the coolant. The blue color is the uh, hydraulic hose. Okay, so when Uh, the hydraulic fluid passes through the coolant, heat exchange will happen. So heat which is discharged can be reused. So heat will be collected and uh, you can reuse in the other parts of your hydraulic system. In comparison with air cooling operating, operating costs uh, higher uh, due to the required coolant and the susceptibility to correction okay so temperature difference of up to approximately 35 degree celsius can be ended so you since you are required to use uh, extra coolant so it requires for higher operating cost lah. okay so and it also like not allowing corrosion to happen this reduce corrosion in the system And it can handle higher temperature. Okay, so my cost thing here, lah. Okay, so that's on the water cooler. An air cooler, hydraulic fluid from the return line flow through the cool oil pipe, which is cooled by a fan. So then, in the case of fan, yes, sir, lah. So then, if you just like get the pipe, you let the fan. The fan to connect with the pipe. So expect the natural heat transfer to happen lah. So it's not using any. You just need to pay for the electric. The electric is far much lesser than you buying a. Yeah. Okay, so advantage are the simplicity of the installation and low operating cost. Operating cost you just believe such a fan. Ah, the young industrial fan pun juga. Tapi the disadvantage will be. The noisy lah, uh, it will be noisy because fan uh, naturally it will be a bit noisy, uh, which can uh, cause nuisance, undesirable uh, hearing. If like too strong, can cause uh, your uh, hearing damage. Okay. Advantage are less simple, easier to maintain, so easier maintenance, easier replacement. Uh, low operating cost uh, disadvantage at the learning side. Okay, so I think uh, that's all for today. Yang ni I akan cover dalam a puzzle video. So next week kita akan buat discussion lah. Okay, so any any question for regarding today this lesson? Uh, lesson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, so if the operating temperature of the liquid is below 25 degrees, it will be too cold to operate, right? Not below 25. It's uh, 25 degrees above normal room temperature. Maximum. Meaning it can go up to 50, 50 degrees. But isn't it like the... the... The higher the, the higher the temperature, the less viscous the liquid is. The viscosity is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if the viscosity of the oil can be maintained within the fifty to sixty degrees, uh, so it still can be used. That's why I say so. Don't be more, not exceed. So it can be below. Below is okay. So not too cold. So if too cold, the system. Will not function properly. Uh, it will uh, have this uh, sudden impact uh, if too cold. So if it must be within the room temperature to uh, around fifty. So if like forty degrees or thirty degrees, it's still fine. 
Okay, sir. Uh, so just not exceed 50 to 60 degrees. So that's why it's very important for you to follow the manufacturer's uh, requirement. Uh, so you can watch a manual skate. Lah. So the manual dia akan bagi tau. So you need to operate at this level. Uh, uh, so normally in the cold countries, uh, like uh, maybe like Norway, Sweden, where near to the near, near to the North Pole, or like Australia or New Zealand near to the South Pole. Uh, so you will have uh, additional coolant to be inserted, like and they call it as the antifreeze. Uh, so that the uh, coolant, even though you are operating in it in the cool environment uh, or snow environment, uh, the oil will be maintained like in the room temperature. Uh, that's why they put, put an additive inside the coolant. They call it as an antifreeze additive, uh, which can uh, preserve the quality of the oil. Okay, so any other question? Okay, if no questions, I think that's all for me today. So tomorrow we will have lab and next week we will continue as usual. Okay, so thank you so much. See you next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.